Okay. Oh. All right then. That's all good. <laughs> oh, let me go ahead and pick up your. Uh, any questions about the test? Do you guys know we don't have um, class Friday? No class Friday. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. So I see some of you already had an, an handing in your chapter assignments. That would be great. I'll take either, or and if you don't have them done, you have till three to get them done. Okay. All right then. Yes, we finally get to talk about clouds. So just a few pictures of, well, this is a picture of the hydrological cycle in action, right? From the clouds, and if it's raining. it's raining, that's right. If the cloud droplets are heavy enough, basically, and we'll talk about updrafts and kind of gravity that kind of work together, we can get it to fall from the sky. They look like they're having a good time. <laughs> And this actually is one of the things I've already been talking about, the whole why does a cloud look milky white? And we talked about actually um, the fact that when energy comes through the Earth's atmosphere, that energy can either be scattered, transmitted, or absorbed. So the whitishness of clouds is kind of fun because it's if you look at basically the light that hits the cloud, the multiple part and multiple scattering is it kind of pings around the cloud. The other thing, it's a type of non-selective scattering. So you know with Raleigh scattering, it's like selective for blue. Um, this sort of scattering is just like any wavelength, so that's why they all, the clouds look white. Have you ever seen clouds kind of look kind of gray, especially on the bottom? Okay. From what I understand, it has to actually do this multiple scattering. Basically, the light gets ping-ponged around, ping-ponged around, and so actually by the time it kind of gets down to the bottom, it is... It is dimmer. It is darker. So, all right. This is where I say if your mother said don't eat snow, this is probably why. <laughs> We're going to talk about some, there's some abbreviations um, definitely in meteorology. And CCN is an abbreviation for cloud condensation nuclei. So CCN, cloud condensation nuclei. Um, and the reason your mom said don't eat snow or whatever is, I think it's fine to eat snow. <laughs> but it's because in order for up in the clouds to ultimately precipitate or to be a snowflake, well, snow is precipitation, whether it be snow or, or rain, actually you need a, a, some sort of what we call cloud condensation nuclei to get the party started. And what works great for cloud condensation nuclei are like little bits of dust. Clay are great cloud condensation nuclei. So they basically, um, well, I'm going to talk about two types of cloud condensation nuclei on the next slide. But they, they take water vapor and they say, all right, the conditions are right. We're at 100% relative humidity. It's time to go ahead and to turn from the vapor to liquid and kind of get the party started that way. But they have, there has to be more to the story because when they start basically cloud condensation nuclei start taking vapor from the air, then you're not at 100% relative humidity anymore. So we're going to actually have to talk this week about how that continues to, to get larger, the water particles. Okay, so cloud condensation nuclei, the little dirt speck basically, the kind of the odd thing that... Um, helps uh, seed your cloud. Have you ever heard of cloud seeding? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what they do with cloud seeding is basically they give it something false that it didn't already have to begin, um, to begin this uh, condensation process. So um, I mentioned cloud condensation nuclei help get the party started. Um, and they come in two forms. The first one, um, they actually love the, the idea of basically taking water vapor and making it become a liquid. They're called hygroscopic cloud condensation nuclei. And they're like, dude, I am so itching to make you go from a vapor to a liquid. Let's get this party started. Honestly, it doesn't even have to be 100% relative humidity, OK? The other ones um, are the reluctant. The word phobic means fear or afraid, yeah. 
So these are the reluctant ones. Reluctant. Okay. They're reluctant to go ahead and get the party started, but they'll do it if they have to. In order for a hydrophobic cloud condensation nuclei to work, basically you have to oversaturate the air with water vapor. But whether, regardless of which sort of particle the cloud condensation nuclei is, one of the things that's a player is, um, and I always think of, is it Thick Pen? Who's Thick Pen? The character on Peanuts who actually has a trailer pig done behind him. Pig Pen. Pig Pen. Thanks. I always think of Pig Pen, and he's kind of got the, the duck behind him. So the thing about cloud condensation nuclei is they're really, if you get too far from the Earth's surface, you're going to run out of them, is my point. So cloud condensation nuclei at upper elevations, eh, not so much. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is break here and show you a video, about 15 or 16 minutes worth of a video, and then we're going to follow up with the cloud types after the video, because...